Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, we're going to be cover covering uh, OSI model again today. Uh, this will be part number four, and this is part of our computer network training series. Uh, again, I want to call your attention to computernetworktraining.net. Uh, that's a website where you can find some additional information that you might find helpful. Uh, chapter 2, Part 4, OSI Model. We're continuing uh, pretty much of an in-depth study of the OSI model. OSI is really important to understand. The better you understand the OSI model, the better you'll understand networking. Uh, applying the OSI model continued. Uh, the communication between two systems or two computers. At each layer of the OSI model, there are some information is added uh, to the original data. And we have a diagram here showing this. Uh, we have our layers, the application to the physical. And over here we're showing the functions, the layer functions. First one is our user interface at the application level layer to our user. This is where we put our data in a format uh, that the user can use. Or the user might be generating uh, files or information to be sent out. So depending on which way this information is going, if it's going down through the layers, the user is driving it. If it's coming up through the layers, then it's information that the user is receiving and that so he can see it and use it. Presentation layer. This is where the, le the information is formatted for the user uh, to see. Or if it's going out, it's where we're taking the files and we're putting it in some kind of a form. Now that could be if it's a documentation file, it could be put into a Microsoft uh, Word documentation format. If it's a picture file, we might be putting it into some picture format. So depending on what the data is, the presentation layer will take care of uh, translating that data. The session layer. The session layer is the connection of the two computers. It's going to establish that connection, maintain it, and then later tear it down. Uh, transport. That's the TCP uh, protocol used in the transport layer. Uh, transport layer is going to make sure that the data that we send is accurate and reliable. And if there is a problem, it will check that and then re Quest a resend of a particular packet, not the whole file, but just a piece of that file, which is a packet, uh, because we have segmented our data into what we call packets. Now, our next layer is where we add the IP address. If we're moving down through this layer, these layers will be adding the IP address. If we're coming up through the layers, we'll be examining that IP address to make sure it's the user's IP address. And this is where our routers come into play. Our routers use the IP address uh, determine the path uh, that this packet needs to take to get to its destination. Data link layer, this is uh, our physical uh, address that is added during the data link layer, and this is what our switches use uh, to switch data on a local area network. So we're adding information until we get down here to our physical layer, then we're converting this information into a signal. And it might be voltage levels to go out on a cable, it might be pulses of light in a fiber optics, or it might be uh, some frequency information if it's wireless. Applying the OSI model, frame specifications. Two major categories of frame types. Uh, Ethernet, this was developed by Xerox back in the early 1970s. And then we also have a token ring type that uh, you might still find in use today. Uh, it has become pretty much outdated and it's not too likely that you'll see it, but you might see it at a bank or someplace uh, like that. It was developed by IBM in the 1980s. So this technology has been around for quite a long time, but it's amazing how well it still works today, even uh, 30 years later. Uh, project 802, very important project we're going to discuss. Uh, this is by the IEEE. We talked about that standard uh, before. Uh, this effort uh, just to standardize the physical and logical elements of our network. Uh, frame types and addressing come under this. Connectivity, uh, networking, media, all the different types of media. The error checking algorithms that are also used and also the encryption that we use uh, to encrypt our data. All comes under the 802. Uh, emerging technologies and more. Uh, as new things come up, they'll come up with a new subcommittee, uh, a new subsection to the 802 and uh, come up, start coming up with specifications to standardize that for the entire industry. Uh, can be applied to the layers of the OSI model also. Uh, here are some uh, subs of the 802. We've got uh, 802.1, which is our internet working, the routing, the 802 logical link control frames. We've talked about that. The 802.3, this is our Ethernet LAN uh, subcategory. So <clears throat> everything that uh, 
is involved with Ernie Center Land comes under the 802.3. Also, the token ring bus or the token ring uh, 802.5. That's important to remember. Uh, and 802.11, the wireless standards. So you can see this continues to grow as new technologies are introduced. And again, standards are really important. Uh, the industry moves so quickly that oftentimes new technology is developed without standards. And that becomes a problem because everybody has a tendency to develop things a little bit differently. And then things aren't compatible. We had that problem uh, when the CD-ROM first came out. We had manufacturers making it a little bit different so nothing was compatible. If you bought a CD-ROM for one manufacturer, you'd also have to buy the cable and the plug and the interface card that would uh, make it compatible with your computer. But you couldn't take one CD-ROM and put it into another computer because we had no spec for it. So the IEEE has been very helpful to come up with industry standards to help make things compatible from one computer to another. Uh, summary. Uh, standards are documented agreements uh, containing uh, precise criteria. And again, this is pretty important so that we have uh, standards between equipment so things are interchangeable and compatible from one computer to another. Significant standard organizations, the ANSI, uh, the EIA, TIA, the IEEE, the ISO, the ITU, the ISOC, the IANA, and the ICANN. All of these could be testable, so you need to get uh, some familiarity. Uh, again, we, we discussed quite a bit about the IEEE, very important standard uh, for coming up with the specifications, especially the 802 project. The ISO, uh, uh, this is uh, the model that we use to look at the internet or the, the network and to understand how each layer is applied uh, to the packets and how packets are capsulized and then decapsulized. Uh, the ICANN is the organization uh, for IP addresses and also for domain, uh, domain names. Uh, excellent model for understanding communications, this ISO model. You really need to understand it. Protocols and application layer. The seventh layer of the ISO model enables software programs to negotiate. Protocols and presentation layer, the sixth layer, the, the OSI model serves to translate between the application and the network. Uh, session layer, fifth layer, uh, going to establish sessions between two computers. Primary function of the protocol transport layer. Uh, that's to oversee the end of end delivery. We're going to make sure in our transport layer that we have reliable, accurate data. Network layer, uh, the third OSI model, uh, manages the logical addressing. The IP addressing is put into our packets and read at this level. Uh, network layer address is also called logical or virtual. This again is IP address. Primary function of the data link layer, MAC addresses are going to be added uh, during this layer and also read during this layer. Uh, data link or uh, logical link control is also a part of this layer. Uh, protocols at the physical layer. This is what generates the voltages or the logic levels, the ones and zeros that we send out over our cables or our media. And uh, data requests from a software program is received by the application layer, the protocols, and is transferred down through these layers of the OSI model until it reaches our physical layer. Data frames are small blocks of data with control addressing. The MAC addressing is a part of what we call frames. Uh, 802 standards, the significance of these standards. Some are more important than others. I kind of brought some of these out, like 802.3 for the Ethernet, uh, 802.11, uh, which is our wireless, and 802.5 for our token rings. Uh, layer functions. Uh, this is real important to understand what f the function is of each layer and then also the equipment, the routers and the switches and the cables. What we're, these are usually our first three layers here, physical, uh, data link, and, and network is where we talk about our equipment. Activities. Uh, we have an OSI model uh, activity lab that I want you to work on. That's going to help you to memorize these layers. And then we have a quiz, uh, 2.4 for the OSI model. And that's it for this. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, that concludes this part of Chapter 2. Thanks again. Bye.